Greetings, Basketeers! Josh here, and today we're going to learn how to play Sissy Strut by The Meters. Love this tune. It's a great tune to play with a band because lots of people know it, so somebody can just call it and you guys can just play it, and it's fun. And you can all say hi ya at the beginning. <laughs> um, yeah, great tune, but dangerous things happen on it, which is that sometimes guitar players like to add extra notes. So today, we're going to learn how to play this tune the way it is on the record, the way that the riffs actually go, so that when you're playing this on a gig, you can correct your guitar player, put them in their place, baby. Uh, so to follow along, you can download the PDF and get free sheet music and tablature to follow along today. Uh, this tune isn't too difficult. I wouldn't call it a beginner beginner tune. There's some 16th notes involved, and you've got to get your fingers around a little bit. Um, so somewhere in the beginner intermediate range uh, for this tune, I would say. And today we're going to do some play-alongs for each of the three sections of this tune. So let's just get right into it. Riff number one that you heard me playing in the intro. Is uh, in the key of C minor. Although, as I say in a lot of my videos where I'm addressing funky tunes, there's a little bit of bending of the major minor tonality with funk because it's just a greasy sloppy beast so uh so that first phrase we play is just straight off the c minor pentatonic scale just root flat seven five fifth i mean root flat seven fifth minor third back to the root just a pentatonic scale missing the fourth really then the next phrase we're going to the to the major sixth so it's kind of an implied dorian kind of sound, and I've done video on the Dorian scale if you're not familiar with that, and a video on the minor pentatonic scale, so you can go in the back catalog and check those out if you're not already familiar. So we've got the fifth and the major sixth under the root, which is, this is just a classic, classic bass pattern, uh, uh, your love keeps lifting me higher and higher. Just a really classic little bass pattern for funk and soul and R&B and that kind of stuff. Just going to the fifth and the major sixth below the root. So that's included in the, in the line here. And then this is where bass players often go wrong on this riff because we're just going boom, 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 just chilling on the fifth for a couple beats until the riff comes back around. While what's happening, as you can see in the chord symbols, in the uh, guitar part is... Uh, they're going to B flat chord to an F chord. I'm not voicing it quite the way it is on the record, but um, they're doing a B flat to F chord change, but the bass player on the record, George Porter, does not do that. So what we do in the bass part doesn't quite seem to follow those changes. So it really behooves you to know this tune well, so if somebody calls it on a gig, you don't get scared by, ah, my thing doesn't match those changes because you know that that's just how the tune is on the record. Let's get right into a play along just on that A part uh, at a reduced tempo so you can kind of catch up and then we'll do full tempo. This is my robot, robot attempt at Zigaboo Model East drum groove feel. Here we go. One, two, riff A, four. talk about fingering a little bit more before we do the full speed. Uh, you can either go third finger, first finger, third finger, fourth finger, first finger. So three, one, three, four, one. Or you could start on your pinky and then do the rest the same. Four, one, three, four, one. Either way, you really need to do one, three, four, one there. So you can just flow through those notes really quickly. And then here, just index and pinky. Index, pinky, index, pinky, index index pinky index so that's all that's all pretty easy so that's the left hand right hand i'm not going to give you a specific fingering but just 
watch yourself while you're playing it and make sure you're not doubling up with any of your fingers on that string crossing. It's a really great opportunity to do a rake. Right there. Ba -da -doom, ba -da -boom. Three notes in a row, you can just rake straight across. Which is something I've talked about in my right hand videos before. Okay, let's go. Full tempo play along on the A part. Robot zigaboo. Two, three, four. Okay, so moving on to the next section of the song, you can call it riff B, you can call it riff 2, B part, bridge, whatever you want to call it. Um, you can't tell by listening to the record what you call it, so anyway. Uh, that's basically it, just repeats. This is the tricky part where guitar players, I've noticed over the years, really like to add some extra notes. So let's do the, uh, after the play-alongs, I'll tell you which extra notes they add and why I don't think it's such a good idea to do it. Um, so this is really easy, just a little, uh, just a little C minor pentatonic box. We've just got a octave, fifth, octave, flat seven. And then we walk down to the root. Really simple. And that's the whole thing. It just repeats that little uh, two bar phrase. So let's do that slowed down with robot zigaboo. One, two, three, four. Let's do that at full speed. B part. One, two, three, four. So not very technically challenging. If anything, it's a little easier than the first part. What guitar players tend to do, and other people do it too, but guitar players love adding extra notes where they don't belong. What they do is they play it like this. So that in that first part of the phrase, they're adding, they're just adding one extra note. So instead of, it sounds like, and I just have this strong bass player reflex that says, don't add that note there. It's not, if you're trying to make it sound like the meters anyway, if you're not trying to do your own wacky version of it, that's really different. If you want it to sound meters -y, I think that adding that extra note takes some really important space out of the line. And meters funk and New Orleans funk in general is not like noty and shreddy. It's like spacious and greasy. And especially this section, I mean, it's all about that drum groove. Like the, the uh, guitar and bass parts are not the important thing that's happening. The important thing that's happening is the drums. So adding extra notes in, I feel like really diminishes the quality of the line. That's, it's really subjective, it's my personal opinion, but the meters agreed enough that they recorded it this way. So I like to play it the way that the meters played it and not add that extra note. And um, you know, if you're in a rehearsal and somebody's adding that extra note, feel free to correct them and tell them I sent you. Okay, diatribe over, moving on to the solo section. Uh, this bass line is so killer. You gotta listen to the record on this. I'm doing it as much justice as I can, but um, it's just seriously, it's just C, G, and G. It's just a root and a fifth in a couple different spots. And it's just so funky. I just, George Porter is just killer. So, um, so what I have indicated here on the sheet music is kind of a basic version of what he plays, but there are some subtle rhythmic variations and ghost notes that kind of come in and out. So I encourage you, if you've got the ear for it, to listen to the track and pick out those variations on your own. But here we go, let's just play along with the way I've got this written on the sheet music at full tempo. It's not too hard. One, two, three, four. On the track, this solo section is pretty short, but live, this is what you would loop over and over and over again for people to take longer solos on is just jamming over the C chord. And then typically when people finish their solos, you go back to. 
So on the sheet music there, I've indicated the way the form is on the record and then the way I've found people generally play the form in live settings because that's the way you're going to be playing it. You're not going to time travel back to when they recorded this record and uh, swap bodies in a Freaky Friday way with George Porter. <laughs> um, so that's, uh, that's what you got there. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope this will help set the record straight on that B part because um, I would love for that space to remain intact in all playings of Sissy Strut. It's all good, but uh, just my thoughts on the matter. Thank you guys as usual for your viewership. Please remember to subscribe and share these videos on your social media. I really appreciate that. And if you like these videos, it's a free way that you can help me grow this channel. Uh, for non-free ways to help me grow this channel, you can check out my Patreon page where you can pledge a small amount per video and get uh, Kickstarter style rewards for doing that. And you can also just make PayPal and Venmo donations through my website. Still working on the new book. Hopefully it'll be out sometime this year. In the meantime, Beastly Scales and Arpeggios is available for you intrepid shredders who want to wiggle your fingers like this. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Thank you for watching. Be excellent to each other and party on dudes.